All right, it's good to see you. I'm glad that you all are enjoying each other's company and conversation, and we're sorry to break that up, but we want to uh, go ahead and move on and introduce our special guest today. You've been hearing about him and uh, looking forward to this time, and so uh, I have here to my left, Billy Bajma, and he has uh, most recently played with the Baltimore Ravens uh, as Super Bowl champs that they uh, ended up being. And just an incredible story that, that he has, and we want him to share. He brought with him his wife, Emily, down here. Uh, she's sitting next to Brad. And then uh, their son, their oldest, is Will right here. Will is five. And then Ben is three. And uh, Audrey Kate is two. And uh, I, I don't want to give too many details away here about, uh, about his life or anything, and I don't know a whole lot, but uh, I've gotten to know Billy just a little bit in the, the past couple of years through Chris Chamberlain uh, as they played together in St. Louis. And uh, the one thing that I know about this guy is that uh, above all of the, the fame, all, above all of the, the accolades um, uh, and just the, the notoriety that he's gotten, that, that he has a heart to serve God, and he's doing that wherever he is and, and with whatever he can, uh, everything from FCA camp speaking to small uh, young ones to being in schools and giving of his time and energy in that way. He's been a supporter of our golf tournament in the past and uh, just a generous heart and ready w and willing to, to do what he can. So, uh, Billy, would you come and, and speak to us? Would you welcome Billy this morning? <laughs> Thank you guys. It, uh, it's great to be here. Um, just excited about the chance to kind of share my story over the last seven or eight months. Um, it's been exciting. Uh, last season, uh, you know, I played with the St. Louis Rams. We had a tough season. I'm, just go I'm going on my uh, eighth year in, in the NFL and finished up with St. Louis, and I was here all off season. and I became a free agent after that year, and, you know, free agency opened and nobody called, and, and uh, continued to kind of wait around and didn't get much attention all through free agency. Um, I was working out with Chris Chamberlain and, and staying in shape and, and, you know, staying ready to play, thinking I would, uh, I would get a chance, but uh, the phone just never rang, and it stayed that way all through the off season. Uh, you know, some of my friends, Chris, and others that we work out with, uh, were heading off to their their training camps, and and it was late in the summer. Training camp had started. It was five days into training camp, and I still hadn't gotten a call. And I was really starting to think about, you know, what am I going to do after football? And you know, everywhere I would go, people would say, hey, "Man, is anybody called? I know that must be tough. That has to be hard. I'm sorry." all this stuff, and and uh, I'd say, yeah, you know, I want to play. Hopefully I'll get a chance to, but really it wasn't the hardest uh, thing in the world. It wasn't that difficult, and, and the reason it wasn't was because of a decision I made when I, when I was young to make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. And, and then also uh, from things that God has taught me along the way through sports, um, particularly my junior year in high school, I remember uh, – all growing up playing sports, football, baseball, and basketball, that was a huge part of my life and, and what I loved to do. Um, and I got better and better, and I was pretty good at, at all of them. And I'd never had anything but success really in every level from, from being a kid in Little League to junior high and through high school and, and was at the point where I had set goals and I had dreams of, you know, being a, college athlete, being a professional athlete, and my junior year, I went into that year really excited about the opportunity to kind of make that transition, because this was the year when colleges would start looking at me, and when, when I'd have a chance to, you know, really show what I could do, and, and in football that year, there was a big uh, quarterback battle starting the season. I, w I played quarterback in high school, and really wanted to be the starting quarterback, and I got the starting job, my my junior year, and uh, about five games into that season, I uh, wasn't playing very well, threw a couple interceptions, and I got put on the bench. And for the rest of that season, I just kind of watched from the sideline, and 
it felt like some of my dreams as far as football were slipping away, and, and that was tough. And then in basketball season, the year before, I'd had a great season. This year, I didn't play well at all. Um, I, uh, I ended up just struggling through that season, getting ready for baseball, which I, you know, I felt like was my best sport of all three. And then baseball season came around, and that was the worst of any of them. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I just struggled. I didn't play well at all. Um, before that, I was, scouts were looking at me as a pitcher. And that season, I didn't really even pitch the whole year because I wasn't throwing well. I was all over the place and just struggling. And at the end of that season, uh, it was tough because I looked at everything that I wanted to be, and a lot of that I felt like was was you know, falling apart and slipping away. And I came to realize that a lot of who I was as a person was wrapped up into who I was as an athlete. And I think from that point on, I realized that from then on, sports had to keep the proper place in my life. And, you know, that was behind my relationship with Christ and, and behind other things that, that are more important. And it didn't mean I didn't work just as hard as I ever did, and it didn't mean I didn't care, and, and, uh, but it did mean that I had to keep it in the right perspective. And I think that through a painful experience for me at the time, because it was so important to me and it was tough, God really used that to, to help me grow and help me understand that, you know, it's not the biggest deal in the world. And so I went into this last offseason, nobody called, and, and I was thinking about, you know, what I was going to do beyond football. Um, in fact, I was at my dad's shop uh, working on cutting some metal, exploring the idea of starting a storm shelter business and thinking about, you know, what I was going to do. And, and I looked at my phone, and I'd missed a call from my agent in a strange area code, so I thought, okay, this might be good. And I returned the call, and it was the Baltimore Ravens, and, and uh, they said, you know, we want to fly you out here tonight. It was like 8 p.m. already. There weren't any flights left that night so I ended up 6 a.m. the next morning I was headed out and you know my wife and and kids we'd gotten kind of settled in and in Edmond where our house is and it's a crazy turnaround in the NFL when a team says they want you they want you now so I called Emily and said we're heading out um I I'll see you in a month after training camp hopefully this will work out and I'll make this team and we'll all be together in Baltimore not right back here because it didn't it didn't work out and uh, got a chance to go to go play and and they had an injury uh, with the Ravens that's why I got picked up um, Ed Dixon one of the or Dennis Pitta one of the tight ends had gotten hurt and and so they needed an extra body and I think when they brought me in they didn't necessarily intend on me staying there and making the team but once you're in there you get an opportunity and and played the preseason and worked hard and Fortunately, I had stayed in shape and was ready and, and uh, you know, kind of got the attention of some coaches throughout the preseason and, and had a chance. And I remember Coach Harbaugh telling me about a week before the cut days, uh, we'll see what happens, how all this shakes out. You kind of came out of nowhere for, uh, for us, but you've played well, and uh, I think you really deserve to make this team, but we'll see what happens. And, and uh, anyway, I ended up making the team, and and getting to play with the Ravens, and it was an awesome season. And as the season went on, I grew to love the team and, and the guys. And I remember talking to Emily uh, about two months into the season, and she knew how I felt about this team and how much fun I was having and what a great experience it was. And she asked, you know, what, what do you like so much about this team? What's different about them than the other teams you've been on? And I thought about it, and there were a couple qualities. I said it was the most humble team that I've ever been on. Even though it was the most talented team uh, and some of the most superstars and biggest, biggest names that I'd ever played with, it was also the most humble team. And that was an awesome thing to be a part of. Uh, guys weren't there, seemed to glorify themselves, and it seemed like a bunch of guys that didn't think more of themselves than, than what they really were. And it was a cool thing that, that kind of promoted that unity and and was a great experience. And uh, there's a Bible verse that said, says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. And uh, I think that was a great quality of this team. And then the other thing was it was the most confident team that I'd ever been on. Uh, I think this team had their goals set on, on what we wanted to do and believed that we could do it. 
And it made me think of the story of David and Goliath, of David's attitude when he was facing the giant and, and no one else believed uh, that this giant could be conquered, but David knew he knew how to sling a slingshot and he knew he had the ability that God had given him, but he also knew that he was going to do what he was going to do because it was God doing it through him. And it, it wasn't him killing the giant. It was the, the giant defying the armies of the living God and him facing the giant and, and allowing God to work through him. And I feel like as a, as a team, uh, the core of the team kind of had those two qualities. And I think that's something that really allowed us to, to be successful. And we went through the season... It got exciting at the end. We had our ups and downs and all kinds of adversity through the season. But by the end, uh, we were playing our best football and kind of coming together and believing in, in what we were going to do. And, and uh, you know, we made it through the playoffs where we were big underdogs on the road in a couple of games and, and, and made it to the Super Bowl. And my whole life playing in that game in the Super Bowl has been a huge dream. And it was awesome to get a chance to go there. Um, my first experience with the Super Bowl wasn't so great. Um, we got on the plane, you know, we, when we're traveling, we are excited about this game especially because you know when you get off the, off the plane, the whole world's going to be watching. And, and uh, so everybody's dressed in their, their best suit and excited to get there and, and uh, show up and, and you want to look good when you get there. And so we, the plane lands in New Orleans. And I'm getting off the plane, I kind of look up, and bam, I nailed my head against the, the top of the uh, door of the plane. But, so I kind of looked around, and nobody said anything. Uh, you know, the teammates, they were right by me, but I guess nobody was looking, nobody said anything. I was kind of in the plane, so I thought, well, I, cool, nobody even noticed. And uh, <laughs> so I... We get off the plane and go to the hotel and the meetings. Uh, we have our introduction meetings for the week in New Orleans at the Super Bowl. And, and then after that, I was with a few other guys on the team, and we went out to grab something to eat. And as we were leaving the hotel, Coach Harbaugh was there. And he stops us and says, hey, Billy, what's going on? I just had my, you know, my introduction interview with ESPN. They're asking me all about your head. What? <laughs> What happened? You all right? And uh, so it was a quick reminder that nothing you do at the at the Super Bowl and on that stage went unnoticed. And and just what a what a big stage it was. And Coach Harbaugh thought the rest of the team would enjoy it. So the next day, and in, uh, in our team meeting, he made sure to get that clip and play it for the whole team in our in our team meeting that morning. So that was my first experience with the Super Bowl. And and. Uh, and then throughout the week, it was just awesome to be there, and the atmosphere was, was something that I always dreamed of, um, you know, my whole, my whole life, and, and it was an unforgettable experience. And, and uh, the morning of the Super Bowl, we have a guy that uh, is associated with our team. He works for the team as the director of player development, and he's the guy that when we got to Baltimore, uh, the director of player development kind of helps you find a hotel. He helps with everything. And, and he played in the Super Bowl in 2000. And then they took him on in that role uh, the year after uh, he retired. He was a great player. His name's O.J. Brigantz and, and uh, was on t the top of the world as far as that goes. And they kept him on just because of the type of guy he was. He was a man of faith, uh, a guy that everybody respected and looked up to. And and so the Ravens hired him after he was after he was done playing. And a couple years later, he got diagnosed with ALS, which is a disease that has taken control of his whole body. And now he's in a wheelchair and he can't speak, he can't move, other than to move his head and smile and and kind of look at you. But he has a computer on his wheelchair and he can speak to the team through the use of of his computer and he, he uses his eyes to write out what he's going to say and through the course of the season I really came to respect him because of the things that he said to us and because of the attitude that he had and how he dealt with his circumstances and the morning of the Super Bowl the biggest game of all of our lives he got in front of us and had a speech to the team and uh, 
I want to, because it was so powerful to me at the time and just looking at, at him, I want to read part of it to you. Um, at the first part, he talks about thinking he might not be able to go to the game because he was just in the hospital and, and uh, he might have to miss it. Uh, but he ended up getting to make it and talks about the exciting the excitement of the moment. And he says, and this is through his computer, but he's standing in front of us. He says, I was asked a week and a half ago during an interview the following question. This team seems in many ways to be a team of destiny with the passing of Art Modell, Ray's retirement announcement, etc. Do you agree? My response was this. I don't know with all the different events and challenges that we have had this season that we are a team of destiny, but I will say we are a team of vision. We have faith in a vision we have seen to be Super Bowl champions. Faith is defined as confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Without faith, no great accomplishment is possible. I believe despite my diagnosis, I will walk again. This team believes no adverse circumstance will stop them from achieving their goal of being world champions in football and life. The outside world says seeing is believing, but men of faith say believing is seeing. Many have physical sight, but few have vision to see past their circumstance to their promise. Uh, and to hear him talk about that, you know, the morning of the biggest game of our lives, we're all looking at a guy that we respect and admire who is talking about seeing past his circumstance to his promise. And we all know the faith that he has and the way he's handled his adversity. And uh, you know, he goes on to talk about not playing for uh, trophies or titles but for crowns. And he talks about something that we did as a team, which was after the playoff games, after the AFC North Championship and the AFC Championship, we put the trophy at the center of the team and hold hands and say the Lord's Prayer. This was one of our coach's ideas, and, and uh, he would say, we lay this crown at the feet of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray, and then we, we would say the Lord's Prayer. Um, he talks about that being the most meaningful thing, and then he talks about the word crown, and he uses an acrostic for courageous, resilient, opportunistic, world changers, and nonconforming. And... Coach Harbaugh emailed us uh, his speech, you know, right after he gave it. And so I read it again on the way to the Super Bowl right before the game and, and uh, just was kind of overcome with emotion, thinking about where God had taken me in the last several months and, and what a blessing it had been to be a part of this ride and, to, and all the dreams I'd had about playing in that game and having that opportunity and to get a chance to do it. And... Uh, we played the, we played in the game, and it was a, an exciting game, a great game. We ended up winning and being Super Bowl champions, and I got a chance to celebrate with my two boys and wife and, and family on the field afterward. And it was an unforgettable moment and a, a dream come true. And uh, I'm thankful for everything that God allowed us to experience this season. Um, it was an amazing experience, but when I think about uh, OJ's talk about crowns. Um, Chris Chamberlain and I, and I have a football camp in the summer for 11 to 14 year olds, and we've used the verse, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 25. Uh, it says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. And we talk to the kids about what that means and given all they've got and everything they do and, and how we're supposed to do that. Um, but then we talk about what it goes on to say, which is uh, they do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. And that uh, a Super Bowl trophy and the, the ring that we're going to get and all those things were a dream and an awesome experience and uh, just a wonderful blessing throughout the season. But it's awesome to think and remind myself that that's one of those crowns that won't last. But our faith and what we do for Jesus and what Jesus did for us on a cross allows us to, to have that crown that will last forever. And, and uh, I think that's just the most amazing thing to think about. However great it was, and it was fun and an awesome experience that we'll never forget, 
we've got something even greater, and that's uh, because of what Jesus did for us. Thanks.